All right, so in this video, I'm gonna be talking about five big trades the New York Mets can make in 2023. I'm only gonna be uh, including pitchers in this video, so this is gonna be uh, pitchers only. Uh, and this, of course, is a part of my New York Mets trade rumors series here on this channel. Um, if this interests you guys, let's get right into it. So the first player the New York Mets could trade for in 2023 is Corbin Burns of the Milwaukee Brewers. Now, Corbin Burns is a player that has been talked about as possibly being on the trade market the last couple of years now, uh, and as sort of the next player that could be made available um, in regards to a trade. Now, uh, the Milwaukee Brewers are in sort of an interesting spot. They're not a terrible team. Uh, they're not a great team. They're in a pretty interesting division, though, where it can kind of go either way. Um, I think this team's probably on the outside looking in, though, when it comes to a playoff spot. And, you know, as another year passes and you're a Brewers fan, you sort of wonder what the you know long-term future of someone like Corbin Burns or Brandon Woodruff could be. Um, you know, as a member of the Brewers. Now, uh, you know, Corbin Burns is one of the best players in all of baseball, one of the best pitchers in all of baseball, and would command a ton on the trade market. So uh, with him being a free agent in 2025, is it possible that Corbin Burns gets traded? Absolutely. Now, if you're with the New York Mets and you want to make a big splash, um, and your pitching staff is pretty stacked as it is, but if you want to get even better uh, and sign a player for more of the long-term approach, Corbin Burns would be a tremendous option. Uh, now in 2022, Corbin Burns had a 4.0 war, uh, 12 wins, 8 losses, an ERA of 2.94, uh, 33 games played, 202 innings pitched, 243 strikeouts, and a whip of 0 0.965, which is pretty impressive. Uh, Corbin Burns, of course, a uh, two-time All-Star in 2021 and 2022, uh, and, and is a Cy Young champion. Um, and won the ERA, uh, ERA title also. So Corbin Burns, um, one of the best pitchers in baseball. Uh, if the Mets were able to pull this off, it's going to cost them quite a bit. Uh, but if you want a player that can take over once someone like Max Scherzer's gone or someone like Justin Verlander's gone and sort of build a rotation around Corbin Burns, um, recently acquired Kodai Senga, uh, as well as some other players, I think the New York Mets would make a ton of sense for Corbin Burns, uh, along with the team that could, you know, sign him for a contract extension. So um, I love Corbin Burns. I think if he's made available in trades, uh, you think the Mets would have to inquire about him. So Corbin Burns is the first player on this list. Now, the second player I want to talk about is a player that could actually be realistically traded uh, maybe this year, maybe next year, whatever the case may be. Uh, and that is Edward Cabrera of the Miami Marlins. Now, uh, Edward Cabrera is just 24 years old at the time I'm recording this video. Uh, he's going to be 25, though, throughout the 2023 MLB season and has a bright future ahead of himself. Now, the Miami Marlins are in sort of a weird spot because they've made it public to teams that they're willing to trade away any of their star pitchers, or sorry, any of their starting pitchers on their roster besides, uh, you know, recently acquired Johnny Cueto um, and, of course, uh, Sandy uh uh, Alcantara. So uh, besides those two guys, basically anyone's available. We saw a couple days ago, I guess a couple weeks ago now, uh, the Pablo Lopez trade to the Minnesota Twins that was being talked about. That finally happened. So uh, with Pablo Lopez gone, that could be the first domino to fall. Edward Cabrera could very well fall. Now, Edward Cabrera, uh, a pretty highly touted player. Um, the youngest player available on this list and player that is under team control uh, and won't be a free agent until 2029. So if you're looking for more of a long-term approach uh, and somebody you don't have to spend top dollar for, uh, Edward Cabrera is a tremendous option for the Mets uh, that could complement some of their other players as well. Uh, if you're able to get a guy like Edward Cabrera for rotation, uh, you could spend that money elsewhere. So I think Edward Cabrera could make a ton of sense for the Mets if they want to go for a younger player. Um, they don't have to pay for quite some time now. Uh, in 2022, really solid year from Edward Cabrera. Uh, 2.1 war, 6 wins, 4 losses, 3.01 ERA. Uh, just 14 games played though, so not a super large sample size, but you know enough of a sample size to consider him uh, you know, a highly touted pitcher. 71.2 um, innings pitched, 75 strikeouts for a whip of 1.079. Um, I like Cabrera. He's one of those players that I think for a long-term approach I could make a lot of sense for a Mets team that uh, might have to you know chop some payroll these next couple of years if things don't go well so uh, if they want to go all out and go for someone like Edward Cabrera I think he'd be a tremendous player for the Mets to keep an eye on. So uh, number two, I have Edward Cabrera of the Miami Marlins. Now, the third player on this list is Tyler Glasnow of the Tampa Bay Rays. Uh, Tyler Glasnow, of course, um, is a well-known player, uh, a really solid pitcher. Has no big-time accolades to his name, though, but I think the big lefty uh, could actually be a very intriguing player to the Mets if they want to go down this route, potentially. Uh, but also, too, I can see a world where, especially if he gets injured again uh, and with his contract you know, up for uh, renewal in a couple of years, uh, the Rays may be moving off of him for uh, some assets and for some young prospects. So uh, I think Tyler Glasnow could definitely be a trade target these next couple of years. But um, regardless, uh, Tyler Glasnow did not play very much in 2022. Uh, just appeared in two games, uh, only pitched 6.2 innings, but
but did have a pretty, you know, awesome, I guess, outing uh, in those two innings. Uh, 1.35 ERA, 6.2 innings pitch, as I mentioned before, 10 strikeouts, a whip of 0 0.9. So, uh, you know, tiny sample size, but a good sample size regardless. Uh, but back in 2021, where it's a bit of a larger sample size, uh, Tyler Glasnow was also a tremendous player. Uh, five wins, two losses, uh, 2.66 ERA, um, 88 innings pitched, um, you know, overall really solid. Now there's injury concerns as we've seen throughout his career. So maybe a bit of a financial risk to take with signing Glasnow to a long-term contract. But if you're Steve Cohen and you're the Mets, maybe you can you know acquire him at a, uh, at a reduced price, hope that he can stay healthy uh, and add the big lefty who's one of the best lefties in baseball when he's healthy uh, to the Mets uh, for 2023 and beyond. So I think Glasnow is one of the more interesting players I put on this video, uh, put in this video uh, just because of the fact that um, he's not old, but he's injury prone. He's big. He throws hard. He's lefty. A lot of good things. Uh, he plays for the Rays, so they could trade him very soon. I don't know. I thought it'd be pretty interesting to add this on the list uh, as a potential Mets target. So at number three, I have Tyler Glass now. Now the fourth player on this video or for this video is going to be David Bednar um, of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Now David Bednar is not a starting pitcher. So the first relief pitcher um, I can add for this video I think it actually make a lot of sense, especially the fact that he plays for the Pirates. Um, I think if the Pirates are off to a terrible start, uh, teams are going to be calling about David Bednar uh, for the playoff run um, as a nice reliever, especially a lefty um, for the uh, 2023 season and the postseason. Now, uh, David Bednar, of course, is a one-time All-Star, you know, being named an All-Star this past year in 2022, um, having a really solid season, a 1.3 war, three wins, four losses, ERA of 2.61, uh, uh, 45 games played, 19 saves, uh, 69 strikeouts, Nice. Uh, in 51.2 innings pitched and a whip of 1.123. So uh, David Bednar, just 28 years old, um, you know, only been in the MLB for what, like two or three years now uh, for the most part. So still relatively unproven. But if he can, you know, build off last year uh, in 2022 uh, and take that to the Mets in 2023, if he were to be traded there, I think the, uh, the Pirates could get back some pretty good assets for him. Uh, and he could be a nice player for the Mets coming out of the bullpen, especially in a playoff run. And the fact that he throws left uh, in this bullpen, Penn got a lot better. This might be the sort of move that they make to go all in for the 2023 postseason if they are in that sort of position. So we'll keep an eye, I guess, on David Bednar. I can see the uh, the Pirates shopping him uh, closer to the deadline if things aren't going well. Uh, and it's like the Mets, if you want to, you know, bolster your bullpen, add a lefty, um, and, you know, have a stacked, you know, bullpen for the 2023 postseason, David Bednar could be a tremendous option. So at number four, I have David Bednar of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Now to close out this video, I want to talk about Chris Sale as the last player um, that could be an option, I guess, uh, for the Mets in 2023. Now, Chris Sale's an interesting case because he has a pretty good track record, but as of late, there are some big time injury concerns that we've seen. So uh, Chris Sale might not be worth the gamble financially um, just because of his age and the fact that he has, you know, had some pretty significant injuries these last couple of years. But um, Chris Sale, when he is on the field, is a dominant force. Tremendous lefty, I think for the short term, fits this Mets team well. And if they could pull off a trade with the Red Sox that, in my opinion, are pretty dysfunctional uh, and should look to trade Chris Sale, I think you might be acquiring a player that's value is not super high just because of those injuries, as I mentioned before, and the fact that he is 33, he's going to be 34, and his contract is up in a couple seasons. So uh, Chris Sale, definitely, I think, the most expensive option on this list, uh, but a player that could be exactly what the Mets need and fits the Mets' timeline perfectly. Uh, now, in 2021, let's look at the past couple of years for Chris Sale. Can't really get a gauge in 2022 because, you know, we didn't play a lot. Uh, but in 2021, five wins, one loss, um, 3.16 ERA, uh, nine games played. So not great there, uh, but had some pretty solid stats. 42.2 um, innings pitched, 52 strikeouts. So, yeah, Chris Sale could be a huge gamble if you were to trade for him. But I think the Red Sox, especially if they get off to a tough start and Chris Sale's, you know, proven to be healthy, um, I think that he could be a nice player uh, for the Mets to go after, especially for someone that you could probably get uh, for, uh, you know, get pennies on the dollars for. So I think that it can make a lot of sense. One of those high risk but high reward trades, uh, if the Mets were to make it, but Chris Sale, imagine this guy in a rotation. Um, imagine this rotation just for a second. In the playoffs, Justin Verlander, Max Scherzer, Chris Sale, Kodai Senga. Yeah. That is impressive. That's why I put Chris Sale on this list. 
If you want to swing for the fence and if he's healthy, imagine that in the postseason. So that's going to be it for this video. Uh, those are five players that I think um, could be some pretty big time trade options uh, for the New York Mets in 2023. Now, are, now, are any of these players going to get traded? Not necessarily. Could these players get traded? Absolutely. Uh, and I think if these players are made available on the trade block, um, they could make a lot of sense for the Mets to pursue, at least in my opinion. Uh, leave your thoughts down below in the comment section as always. Have a great rest of your day. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one.